Well, the Ultimate Fighting Championship is back in the beautiful Garden State. This time, it's for UFC on Fox 18. We're just hours away. It takes place Saturday night, January 30th in Newark, New Jersey at the Prudential Center. Of course, the main event, Ryan Bader versus Anthony Rumble Johnson, the winner, could very well be next in line for a UFC light heavyweight title shot. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ariel Hawani in Hoboken, New Jersey. I'm alongside the man in the hat, Chuck Mendenhall, as we prepare for UFC on Fox 18. And Chuck, you know, the last two UFC on Fox events, the one in July that was Dillashaw Burrell for the bantamweight title, the one in December that was Cerrone versus RDA for the lightweight title, were big cards with big main events. What are your thoughts on this one going into it? Uh, it lacks some of the pizzazz of those ones. You know, um, obviously it doesn't have a title fight, and we're not even sure if it has big title implications, to be honest, just given the state of the light heavyweight division. But ultimately, it's a, it's a good fight. I mean, if you follow the rankings, it's two, number, two against number four. Um, Anthony Johnson should be right up there again, especially if he puts on a good showing in this fight. Um, I think a lot of people are still very intrigued as to what he might be able to do against John Jones if that fight ever materializes. And then Bader, of course, sort of coming along. Um, been sort of a quiet rise to where he's at, but he's, he's been making a stink in the media a little bit about getting his title shot. So um, I feel like you've got some good stakes there. I'm just not sure it's one of those fights that really captures the imagination like some of the other ones you were mentioning. Yeah, Bader's on an impressive winning streak, as you said, but it's one of those where it's like, you're like, oh, wow, it's five in a row because yeah. they're all decision wins. He, he's not blowing anyone out of the water. He's not really like making a big splash. Some of the Victories were a little close. I think back to the one back in Sweden and, um, you know, in January of last year against Phil Davis. Do you think that a win over Anthony Johnson, even if it is a five round decision, should give him that title shot finally? If he has a big emphatic win, if he's able to knock him out, for instance, if he's able to just submit him or something, I think that that would actually do him big favors. This is a big spotlight moment for him because, I, because of what you just said. I feel like he's. He's, yes, he's won those fights, but it's a game plan, uh, execution type thing. He's, a, he's, he's treating it as a pro athlete, not as a fighter. You know, he's getting by these guys. Um, it's just, it's going to be one of those type of things. He has a big platform here to, to make that step forward. But ultimately, um, you have to go back to 2013, the last time he finished somebody like wow. himself. You know, that was against Matt Yushchenko. It just hasn't really put that together recently. In fact, his four losses that he has, he was the one getting finished. It's almost like if he engages in a firefight a little bit, he's the one who gets... He's the one who takes the loss, and I feel like that, you know, somehow that's registered in his head. Um, if so, if he fights the way that we know he can, which is more of a try to control, you know, a controlled fight, um, control the cage, rough up John, you know what I mean? Like, don't put yourself in danger of his power and things like that. We might see another Bader-esque performance, but I, I feel like he wouldn't do himself any favors in that, what we're talking about here. Even if he just ekes out another split decision or like a unanimous decision, but it's not quite spectacular I feel like he, he won't he will probably will not get another title shot soon you know what I mean speaking of the mental side of the game you know both Ryan and his head coach Aaron Simpson have been making a big deal out of the fact that they don't believe Anthony Johnson is a mentally strong fighter that, that they could break him mm -hmm. Do you foresee that happening I don't know man it's it's funny because I feel like we've seen every version of Johnson possible. Yeah. I'm mean, obviously, the guy was fighting at 170 pounds. He wasn't always making it, but the fact that he had the fortitude and the ability to get down to 170 pounds speaks somewhat to his mental, um, what he's able, yeah. what he's capable of. I don't know, man. I mean, I know some people have said he sort of wilts down the stretch, maybe that he, maybe a little bit against um, Cormier, but come on, that's Daniel Cormier. Yeah. I, I don't I don't really buy it, to be completely honest. I think that he's a guy who, um, He's fought a lot of big names in the sport, and I feel like he's finally grown into himself. He's finally grown into his power. I think he finally believes 100% that he belongs in this division, and he's packing the biggest punch that he's ever had. I just think that he's feeling good about himself. I don't think he's going to. I don't think Ryan. If he if he's going to break, I don't think it's going to be Ryan Bader, the guy who do it. And that being said, you know, if I tell you on Sunday morning, oh, that main event ended quickly, you're probably guessing that it was Rumble. If 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 I tell you it went five rounds. <laughs> There's a good chance it's Ryan Bader, right? He'll sort of grind out that kind of win. Okay, so so when you envision this fight, what do you think happens? This is the this is a toughie because yeah. of what I was just saying. If Bader is one, of, if Bader's going to try to fight a game plan, execute a game plan, he's not. You know, it's he's looking. For, he's going to be a little more cautious, and he's not going to stand in the wheelhouse and take something big. You, you you do think in some ways like maybe Bader can sort, start to sort of take one of the earlier rounds and then kind of cruise toward the end. Um, I could see I could foresee that happening, but I ultimately I think that. Johnson is pretty pretty good at landing that big shot. He's been very opportunistic with it. Um, we saw it against, obviously, Gustafson, and we've seen a couple of big ones recently. Um, Jimmy Manuel. I mean, just yeah. these fights are just pretty crazy. So I feel like he's, I still would, when you imagine it, I think I still see him landing something big early-ish. 
first round or two and Bader going out. Bader, like I said, Bader, wow. the way he does lose is he gets finished. So I feel like this is a guy, it's sort of a bad bad matchup in that sense. Yeah, you wonder because when, when Anthony Johnson fought Phil Davis at UFC 172, I'm not saying that Davis and Bader are the exact same, but they have, they have similarities. He was able to stuff the takedown and really control the fight. And when Bader gets frustrated, I think back to that fight against Leonardo Machida. Obviously, Machida, a much different fighter than Rumble. But when he gets frustrated, he seems to open himself up to the knockout. And I wonder if this time, you know, if Johnson starts to stuff a couple of those takedowns, does he get frustrated and then leave himself open? You know what I mean? Glover Teixeira, I mean, mm. that, that was one of those fights where just all of a sudden they went for it and he got, he got hit, you know. Right. And I'm, I could foresee that too. And when, who's mentally breaking in that situation? I mean, um, you could actually make the argument the other way, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But um, it's going to be a game plan. You know, I think Rumble Johnson doesn't, you know, he doesn't try to sugarcoat what he's trying to do. I think he's going to go in there and try to knock him out. And he's going to stuff, like, he's, he's going to want to stuff his takedowns. He's going to want to uh, make it very difficult to budge. He's just not going to want to play Ryan Bader's game. But, um, I don't know. I just think he's he's he'll he'll he's opportunistic enough. He's a wrestler who knows how to land that shot. So I just feel like he'll he'll size something up. I think on Bader and probably finish it, KO TKO. You're not going to give us a time this time. You're you're off that after last time. I think I was too specific with that cruise yeah, one. Yeah. Three thirty six of the third round, yeah, wasn't that it? Was it? I was watching the clock. It didn't work out no, for me no. though. No, so I'll this just, time I'll just say right. second round ish TKO. Right. Fair enough. Let's move along to the co-main event. You know, it's been a very interesting week for the uh, the UFC heavyweight division, yeah. I should say. Um, yeah, first, we thought it was going to be Kane versus Verdum next weekend. Then it was <laughs> Miocic versus Verdum. And then all this happens in the midst of Josh Barnett's media tour, and he's campaigning for it. Rothwell sort of as well. I mean, strange. I think they made the right call, though. I, I don't like the idea of, A, screwing Fox by taking screwing the ticket yeah. buyers. 100%. You know, you, you can't mix and match like that. Do you agree? Yes, 100%. I mean... This this particular card, um, it's got the, li literally it's like that the the top fight and then there's that one yeah. and it sort of drops off from there. Right. I mean, I, I think we can all look at it and be like, you know, a lot of prospects and guys like that are sort of underneath it. A couple of desperation guys on the prelims and things like that. You can't just lop that one out and expect this to be a viable card. Right. Um, the people who bought these tickets, I feel like that's one of the reasons this is a good heavyweight matchup. So I was totally fine with them keeping it the way it is. So Barnett is in an interesting spot. He took a long layoff, couple years, comes back. Looks to be in tremendous shape against Roy Nelson. Uh, lands the most significant strikes in any heavyweight fight in UFC history. You know, grinds him out, yeah. does what Josh Barnett does, picks up a win. Now here he is, kind of climbing that ladder again. But you have Ben Rothwell. Yeah. Who would have thought this at this stage of his career? This is a guy who's had his ups and downs. And, you know, we talk all we want about Overeem being close. On. He has a win over Overeem. You know, he's coming off some big wins as yeah. well. Do you think that the winner of this fight could very well be next in line for a title shot, or do you think Miocic, even though you, know, you look at his resume and you compare it to those guys, it, it, it's all very debatable, and, I, and I'm surprised that more people aren't talking about this one being in that running. It was sort of like, even before the Overeem, all the stuff was going on, I was sort of like, pick a card, who's the contender yeah, yeah. here, you know what I mean? Um, and Rothwell was definitely one of those guys. I, you know, If he's able to go in there and beat Barnett, and he does it in any kind of satisfactory way where it's like a you know, knockout or like the go-go choke he just had on Mitrione, right. something crazy where you're like, wow, you know, and he cuts another promo with his laugh. And I mean, I would put, yeah, yeah. I mean, I would put him, I would certainly put him up there. Um, I think the trump card for him, and it's it's really interesting they mentioned Overeem because because he did beat Overeem. Um, you're sort of like, well, how do you, how would you even explain putting Overeem above sure. him, and that's as, as long as he gets this win. In some ways, I think this puts him in a very good position. But obviously, um, Miocic is still out there. They they have to sort of sort out that top three space, sure. I guess. And as soon as they figure that out, but I would I would say that Rothwell would be right there if he gets it. Barnett maybe not so much because I mean the guy has literally fought once in the last 25 right. months. So right. it's like one of those situations where you're like, you know what he's capable of. You know he would be good if he could get there. But I think he'd he'd probably have to get through Rothwell and somebody else. I, I wonder though if he may be the biggest draw of them all you know because people yeah. remember him he's a former champion especially with Arlovsky losing let's not forget not that long ago Carlos Condit got a title shot over a guy who beat him Tyron Woodley so there is a precedent there I don't think uh, it's the craziest thing in the world how do you see this fight playing out man another one it's just like I, I really don't know um if you if this fight were happening three years ago, yeah, I would be like, well, Barnett's gonna he's gonna walk right sure. through him because if you remember, like Rothwell was like, you know, he'd lose two, win one, lose one, win one. He was like on that sort of skid, and and Barnett had been like on a nice win streak, you know, going into that Cormier fight at the at the Grand Prix. And I mean, if you, you if you just put them together back then, I would be it'd be a simple one. But now I'm like, 
this resurgence of Ben Rothwell has kind of got me thinking different. I mean, especially because he's proven me wrong a couple of times. I thought Mitch Rion would actually beat him as well. Um, just going to that fight, I thought maybe Rothwell would slip. He didn't, but the Overeem won. And uh, just going back with the, these fights, uh, I think he's crafty. I think he's gotten better. Um, he has. And so, I, to me, I would lean towards Rothwell, honestly, wow. because I think Barnett, given the fact that he's now 38 years old and he's sort of had one fight in 25, even as good as he looked against Roy Nelson, I still think, like, more question marks over there. Interesting. Yeah. You think he finishes him? That would be an exclamation point. I think in some ways he might have to. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, if he's going to win, I, I would see him finishing it. When I say the name Sage Northcutt, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Golly. Did you want more? Well said. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's um, unreal. I mean, it would almost be like something like that. And yeah. I don't mean it quite literally, but he's like, uh, it's like nothing we've seen in the fight game, friends. I mean, I, actually, I, I can't think of any sports where a 19-year-old kid comes up and he's just that sort of, I don't want to say naive, but just so positive-tented. Like, he's just, <laughs> you can't rattle him in terms of thing. And, you know, he's just like, you know, wide-eyed and like that. I mean, very odd. And here we are in his third fight, and I feel like all of the press he's sort of doing for this has been the same. And yes. so you're like, I think there was a part of me that was taking it all with a grain of salt at first. Like, is this guy sort of putting us on? But then you're like, he's 19, you know? Yeah. And he's like, maybe just maybe he hasn't been exposed to things. What he's going in the sordid world of fighting. And it's sort of like this uh, nice balancing act, you know what I mean? Yes. Of all the guys that we have that we know are um, less than savory types who are <laughs> in the sport. And then here, here's Sage Northcutt. So it feels a little unreal, but it's also a little refreshing right now. I feel like... Um, what he sort of represents and being positive and, and his ability to fight so far. He's not fighting the biggest names, but just his ability so far, it's like he's really shown up and, you know, he loves fight pass and all that. So I just feel like he's a, he's a breath of fresh air. It's funny, when we were in Orlando for the last Fox event, you know, we were all kind of wondering what's Nate Diaz going to do. So he has his own appeal. And, and, and Northcutt's appeal is completely opposite. It's 180. But I, I can't wait to see, you know, just – how positive he is and what he says, that smile on his face. He, he, he is a very unique and he's 19 years old, as you mentioned. He asked to fight before his 20th birthday. They obliged. They're now putting him on Fox, yeah. on the Fox main card. He was supposed to fight Andrew Holbrook. Holbrook pulled out. He's now fighting Brian Barberina at 170, yeah. so he's moving up. Yeah. That's somewhat interesting, yeah. but I'm okay with his push. I, I don't feel like they need to rush this guy. He's received some flack for his contract and the amount of media attention. I'm okay with everything they're doing yeah. for him. Hang your hat on a guy. He's from the, the reality show. Why not? Yeah, I mean, that's 100%. You've, what, everything you just said. Yeah. The fact that he, though, what was it, eight or nine days notice, he says, you know, we're gonna, we've are gonna got a new opponent. Um, he's not the biggest name, but he's been in the UFC. You're like, you got a new opponent, so 170 pounds, and he's just like, sure, let's do it. I mean, that's got to speak to you a little bit, um, It's especially when you're on that rise a little bit. Um, you know, I have no problem with the way they're doing it. I, it I know he was like, he said, oh, I'd love to be the face of Fight Pass. That'd be great and all this stuff. But ultimately, this is a good opportunity for him Dude. to be on Fox. Um, this would be the biggest exposure he gets. It's not, uh, I know, and I saw one interview who said uh, this would bring a new audience. No, this is the whole audience. This is everybody who yes. you know, like, is able to see something like this. So I feel like uh, him doing his flips after his wins and everything, it's, it could transform him a little bit into a bigger star. And obviously that's what the UFC wants with him, but I'm totally cool with them bringing him up slowly. I wouldn't mind them seeing like all of 2016, maybe a little slight escalation in that, you know, yeah. get him some harder competition, but he's 19 years old. I think he's the youngest guy on roster right now, right? So it's, there's absolutely no rush to push him any further than they are. So he skips FS1 and pay-per-view. He goes from fight pass yeah. to main card on Fox. Does he get the finish again? I think so. Um, you know, this is one of those weird ones because, like, it, he did have the switching opponent and all that stuff. But I just think, like, you know, right now they're, they're looking at guys that they think he matches up well against. I mean, if you were really looking at it, I think he probably does. It was, it was fun to watch him kind of go through some adversity, even with the controversy in that last fight, um, kind of the stand-up and all that yeah. was going on. But he really handled it well. It was almost like he clicked into another gear after that and really took the fight into his own hands. I just think that... He takes that learning lesson, he applies it to this. That fight wasn't that long ago, it came out unscathed. I think his momentum just carries right through this fight. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how he responds on a big stage. Before we go, Yuri Alcantara versus Jimmy Rivera, a great fight at 135 pounds. Two guys, I mean, Rivera in particular, yeah. local guy, right. streaking. What do you think? Who's your pick? Yeah, it's a tough veteran he's fighting, but I would go with the local guy. Anytime they get a situation like this, you feel like this is a Super Bowl in a way. Like he's getting, he's showing up, and he finally gets a, 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 a nice fight on a main card like this in front of a national audience. I just think that he's going to continue his streak. 
All right. Yeah. Good stuff, Chuck. Yeah. Good luck to your Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos. We'll you talk know, about that next week. Yeah, we can talk about that next week. But I was going to say, I mean, last time you were wearing your Montreal, uh, yes. so I thought I'd wear this and get some class up in the strike. With an actual winning team, thought we'd try it with something oh, like wow, that. Wow, look at season. you. Wow, you've been talking to the Boston guys. <laughs> well done. By the way, we talk about Sage Northcutt. The next Sage Northcutt is Randy Brown. That's the second guy that Dana White picked up from his reality show looking for a fight. He'll be debuting on the Fight Pass prelims. Another local guy fights in Queens, or out of Queens, I should say. He's fighting Matt Dwyer on the Fight Pass prelims this Saturday night. All right, we're done. Thank you for watching our coverage up until this point of UFC in New Jersey, UFC on Fox 18. Chai, that's 18 in Hebrew, Chai. That's a big one. So this is an important one for the Jewish people. Stick around Saturday night. We'll have all your post-fight coverage from New York, New Jersey. Thanks so much.